The first thing we need to understand is a little bit about lathe lingo. Lathes come in all different shapes and sizes, and different manufacturers have different styles of lathes. So in order for you to make an educated purchase, you need to understand what lathe size means. Lathes come in sizes, as an example, a 10 by 36, a 13 by 40. The first number indicates the swing diameter of a piece of material from the center of the spindle. Okay, in a 10 by 36 lathe, we are capable of swinging a 10 inch diameter part or a 5 inch radius. We have our tape measure here on the center spindle and you can see we've got about a half inch clearance from the lathe bed with a 10 inch diameter part. Got to have that clearance, otherwise we're going to make lots of noise and ruin an expensive tool. Okay, next we have distance between centers. And this one is a 10 by 36. All right, let's check it out here. And yeah, it's about 36 and a quarter to be exact with the dead center applications that we have. Another important thing to consider when you're looking at a lathe is the diameter of the through hole. Okay, we're going to be inserting work through the spindle of the lathe and the larger diameter through hole, the more convenient and user friendly this lathe becomes. This particular lathe is a 10 by 36 with an inch and 3 eighths through hole. Some of the popular Japanese lathes such as the Jets have a through hole with a diameter of an inch and a half, which is again very useful. Another important factor, depending upon the type of work that you do, is the distance through the spindle or through the headstock. Oftentimes we're going to be running a part through our spindle and we want to be able to dial, indicate, or have access to the other end. So keep this in mind, a lot of your belt drive lays, whether it's a South Bend or the Jet 13 by 40 belt drive, have a lot closer coupled spindle, enabling us to reach or grab the part out of the back side. A lot of your gear driven lays, that dimension is going to be 24 inches. Okay, this one on the particular South Bend has got about a 17 and a half inch distance through the spindle. So it's very short coupled by comparison to a popular gear driven machine. Speaking of gear driven machines, let's take a look at some of the advantages and disadvantages to each of the respective models. Again, this is a South Bend belt driven lathe. The belt comes over the spindle columns and is very easy to feather our speeds along or start that spindle off very slowly by just engaging the belt. In a gear drive machine, this is something you can't do. Either it's on or off. The advantages of a gear driven machine, you get a little more direct horsepower. You don't run the risk of slipping if you're taking a very heavy cut and a fast feed. Also, some of the gear driven machines are a little easier to produce and therefore cheaper if you're looking at purchasing a lathe. Another important factor in your choice of a lathe is threading capabilities. Just about all of the lathes produced today are going to allow you to produce SAE or American grade threads. Often a machine will have metric change gears that will go in the back of the lathe allowing you to switch those if you're going to be doing a lot of metric threading. So that's an important consideration. In the US there's not much metric threading going on overseas and in Europe obviously the metric threads the way to go. Another feature that has come out on some of the newer lathes is a gap bed. A lot of today's modern lathes feature a gap bed and basically it is a sectioned out piece of our lathe bed that is removable allowing us to turn a larger diameter piece of work such as a flywheel, a brake drum, etc. Usually a gap bed is going to buy you an additional three to four inches more in diameter. A gap bed is not foolproof, however, it's very difficult to remove the gap bed and also replacing it becomes quite a task. If I were contemplating buying a new lathe, I would consider the largest type of work that I planned on doing and buy a lathe with that swing size rather than relying upon the gap bed to allow me to turn a larger part. Another advantage to some of the more modern machines is that they come with coolant pumps. If you're going to be using your lathe in a high production capacity, consider the coolant pump. It allows us to pump copious quantities of coolant to the part, keeping the workpiece and the cutter cool, whereby we're not dripping fluid over the top of the part uh, as we do in, uh, in more of a hobby mode. Okay, it's quite a bit messier. You'll need the chip pan completely sealed so you're not pumping coolant all over the floor. So if you're going to be buying a lathe, keep the features and accessories that we talked about in mind. They'll be very important whether you're a hobbyist or going into high production in a designated machine shop. 
Now, let's take a few minutes and go over the detailed parts of your lathe. 